if you wanted Nickelodeon, Slime Time Live, Double Dare, DX 2009 reincarnated, this episode of SmackDown would be right up your alley, because as you can see on screen, we got just goofiness all around with The Miz and John Morrison sitting in some Kevin Dunn white van production truck or whatever, messing around with Braun Strowman all throughout this show. And really, to me, that's the main talking point, because... Yes, Sasha Banks and Bailey for some reason, won the Women's Tag Team Championships, but those belts are about as meaningless as they come. The show itself tonight, basically, how would I put this? Okay, look, if you think SmackDown was good, I'm not going to try and argue with you because I'm probably not going to be able to persuade you of anything and I don't really care to, but basically, hear me out when I say this. Out of the two hours of SmackDown we got... I'd say the opening segment was worth watching. Jeff Hardy and Sheamus for about five minutes. That was worth watching. I think Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, their back and forth promo for about five minutes. That was worth watching. And genuinely, I think the main event was worth watching, especially the like the second half bit. So what's that? Maybe 15 to 20 minutes worth of the show was worth watching. And the rest of it was... Like, what you're seeing on screen, it was rematches, it was a logical booking, there was a, a meaningless six-man tag, Shorty G and the New Day versus Mojo Rowley, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, there was just a bunch of this nothingness, Sonya Deville versus Lacey Evans in a rematch from last week, and this week there was even less story than last week, because they didn't even do a, a promo before the match, and then a referee took a bump, and like, a bunch of this stuff tonight... Like, basically, in the first hour of SmackDown, from the moment the opening segment ended, we got literally 50 minutes of painstaking, boring trash. And what do I mean by painstaking, boring trash? You complain about everything. What do you mean? Okay, hear me out with this. We get a backstage segment where King Corbin is just nowhere to be found. He's left his crown and throne sitting in the hallway, and Otis just walks by with Mandy, takes King Corbin's... Um, crown, and then we proceed to get a 10-minute match between Otis and Baron Corbin that goes to a DQ. So in other words, that whole thing was like about a 15-minute waste of time. And then we got a bunch of just these kind of segments with The Miz and John Morrison being DX 2009, plotting what they're going to do to Braun Strowman and Kevin, and Kevin Dunn's white van. That was SmackDown tonight, because literally that was the whole show. Like, I'll, I'll get into this kind of review now, but... Really, as far as a SmackDown goes, the last two weeks were good. This week wasn't. I'm sorry. I, I can't look at 15 to 20 minutes of a show and say it's good because 15 to 20 minutes was good and an hour and 40 minutes was bad. I, I, I just can't say that. So, yeah, the show itself, this was the first SmackDown I've watched like live in its entirety in about a month. So, I don't think that really helped how I feel about the show. But anyway, we opened with this Jeff Hardy promo. Basically... Just to continue on what I said last week, I really love that they're using this Jeff Hardy angle as a storyline, because once again, I don't care if it's tasteless to Jeff Hardy, I'm sure he's you know okay to do it in some way or another, yes, is it pretty classless that they're bringing up his DUIs and his criminal history, yes, but does it make the storyline, Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus, more interesting, more engaging? Of course it does. Now... I actually care. Two weeks ago, I couldn't have cared less about Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus. Now, because of this angle and this promo Jeff Hardy cut tonight, where he mentioned he mentioned this thing about how he saw a, a man with red hair and a red beard, like he he saw the person you know with the car, and everyone's like, oh, it's Sheamus. And then I saw someone on Twitter say, well, it's you know Sami Zayn. And I thought, damn, it probably is Sami Zayn, isn't it? That would actually make sense. It would be another plot twist. Sami Zayn was the you know the perpetrator of this whole incident. So, Seamus comes out, proceeds to further, you know, bury Jeff Hardy with the whole, oh, you've got a criminal history, blah, blah, blah. And then we get, like, a little brawl between the two. Seamus then bro-kicks Jeff Hardy, lays him out. So, you know, really good stuff. Like, a good, entertaining opening segment. So, I watched the opening segment and thought, you know, this show could be a third straight good SmackDown. Oh, my God. Is this going to be a third straight good SmackDown? So... From there, we went backstage, that backstage segment that I mentioned just before, where King Corbin, for some reason, leaves his throne and his crown in the middle of the walkway, allowing Otis and Mandy Rose to walk by. Otis steals the crown, and then we go to, and then we go to whatnot, and then we come back, and we see Baron Corbin doing some of the worst acting I've ever seen, literally saying, 
Oh my god, where, where's, where's my crown? My crown's been stolen. Hey, look, look, uh, did you see someone take my crown? So, we proceed to get Otis vs. Baron Corbin for literally 10 minutes. This match was just nothing. It was painstaking, boring, nothing to, nothing to talk about. In the end, Corbin grabs a chair and hits um, Otis in the gut with it. So, that was a complete redundant waste of time. Just, what's the point? I swear, Baron Corbin has a match in this, like, first match of the show segment every week. I swear, he did this against Daniel Bryan, like, two weeks before Money in the Bank. He did this versus Elias, like, a couple of weeks ago. He did this, I think he was in, involved in it last week, or, no, this week especially. Like, Corbin always gets put in that spot, and he just ruins the momentum of the show. So, that's what we got there. Then, then we proceeded to go to The Miz and John Morrison in this you know, white van, and they're saying that they're going to make Braun Strowman's life difficult, so Braun Strowman's trying arriving to the arena, and that was that. So, that's what we got there. Then we proceed, we go to commercial, we come back, we see Braun Strowman, like, a CCTV camera, Braun Strowman enters, he's at some, like, bench, there's, like, a, a drink bottle, a bottle of something, and I'm, I look at my phone, next thing I, I look up, and I see the bottle has like, not the bottle has exploded, but it's like fizzed up, and the, the, the stuff's gone everywhere, Braun Strowman is doing his, <laughs> like, and Miz and Morrison are in the truck laughing, like they're scheming, and they've just done the, you know, the most dramatic thing in the world, like what is this? The Miz and John Morrison literally impersonating Double Dare 2000, like, what is this? This is Nickelodeon. And this wasn't even the worst Nickelodeon thing we saw. Like, you saw the picture at the beginning. It's just, oh, this was just terrible. So then we proceed to get a backstage segment where Mojo Rawley is bullying Chad Gable because he's short, which, once again, this is the same script week in, week out. Chad Gable's short. Let's throw two or three short jokes in the Chad Gable segment, and then we'll have Chad Gable get attacked, and then we'll do a match. So this time it was Cesaro and Nakamura beating up Gable, and then the New Day ran over, and we set up a six-man tag match for later in the night. What that six-man tag match accomplished, I'll never know, but anyway, we saw it later on. So, from there, we proceed to get Sonya Deville versus Lacey Evans, rematch of last week. I said on Twitter, hi, at WWE, why not have Sonya Deville cut another killer promo about your obvious blonde favoritism and how she's targeting championships? Never mind, we're getting Sonya Deville versus Lacey Evans instead in a rematch. So, we got Sonya Deville versus Lacey Evans. This went through a mid-match commercial, went for like 10 minutes. But before the mid-match commercial, we literally got Sonya Deville knock into the ref. And the ref went down like he got shot. The ref was just crying for hell. I don't know what that was. Was that a part of a storyline? What was that? That never got mentioned in the show. The ref just got injured or something. And then we went to commercial, came back, we had a different referee. What was that? Is that, is that going to lead to anything? Was that, what was, that looked horrendous. The guy barely got touched. He went down like he was, just got shot. Is, I was thinking that they were going to try and make, like a, a Sonya Deville is so dangerous that she can take out anyone with like one shot or something. I guess, I don't know. What was that? So yeah, in the end, Mandy Rose comes on the time Tron, challenges Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville's all distracted. Lacey Evans hits a woman's right. And that was that. So yeah, just thrilling, thrilling stuff right there. Then we proceed to get, I mean, what did we even get? Oh, yeah, we got this. We got the Slime Time Live segment. We got ba Braun Strowman being interviewed by Kayla Braxton. Miz and Morrison are seen in the Kevin Dunn white van. And we proceed to get Miz hitting some button and a bucket of slime falls on Kayla Braxton. I felt like I was watching the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards or Slime Time Live or Double Dare. What was this? This is G-rated trash, all right? So Braun Strowman proceeds to do some of the best acting you'll ever see, being like, oh, you got drenched in slime. <sighs> and Miz and Morrison are laughing hysterically in the truck. So that's what we got there. Then we proceed to get this IC title face-to-face, -face, Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, pretty good stuff. They're just building up their, you know, their match for next week, which will be really entertaining. That's going to main event. That's going to be awesome. So that's what we get there. Then we proceed to get... Drew Gulak versus AJ Styles, which was a, like a fine, like little match, and Drew Gulak wins. And I got into a back and forth with someone on Twitter who was justifying this. I just don't get why Drew Gulak beats AJ Styles. I don't care the fact that Drew Gulak got released or contractually, whatever happened to Drew Gulak's contract. I don't care what happened. The whole notion that Gulak loses just about every match he's in for a bunch of weeks, he randomly comes back for this match against AJ Styles. 
and proceeds to beat him in five minutes. This is the same AJ Styles who is facing Daniel Bryan next week in the Intercontinental Championship Tournament Final. Gulak just beat Styles for no reason. D did Gulak need to beat Styles? Could you not have Styles just punish Drew Gulak right in front of Bryan's face to really build up the tension a bit more? But no, instead Gulak just beat Styles. Now I take Styles even less credibly. It's so clear that Styles is just going to win the IC title at this point. But yeah, anyway, so that was what we got there. Then we proceed to get another one of these Miz and Morrison segments. This time, Miz has like a... Do you have a golf club? I think. And then Morrison had a baseball bat. And they smash the windscreen of Braun Strowman's car. As if they're DX in 2009. Like, that's literally what this... This was 2009 Degeneration X. So, that's what we get there. Then, I mean, what even happened on this show, dude? Like, I just lost interest after that. Because by this point, we were like an hour and 20 minutes in the show. I didn't even want to watch the thing anymore. Seriously. So, we got the six-man tag match. Shorty G and The New Day versus Cesaro, Nakamura, and Mojo Rawley. If, I'm, if you think I'm going to comment on this, you're wrong. I just don't give a damn. It doesn't matter. I, I think, yeah, the, the New Day and Shorty G, or Chad Gable won. Because The New Day hit their finisher... And Chad Gable held Cesaro Nakamura out of the ring. So Mojo Rawley ate the pin. Will this lead to anything? No. It's just a way to get all these guys on the show. Yes. Did I honestly forget that the New Day were tag team champions? Yeah. So, I mean, that's what we got there. Then we proceeded to get Braun Strowman like, finding the white van, the Kevin Dunn white van with Miz and Morrison in it. Braun Strowman proceeds to go like face first in the camera. And he's like yelling at the camera from like 10 centimeters away. Or like four inches away, Miz and Morrison are laughing in the truck, and Braun Strowman proceeds to flip the thing, and then that was that. And we then had our women's tag team match main event. The women's tag match main event was fine, it was what it was. In the end, Sasha got the win by ro basically rolling up Nikki Cross. So we have new women's tag team champions. I guess they're just prolonging the Sasha and Bailey thing even further. Now, I don't know what's happening with the Iconics and whatnot on Raw. I don't really care. It's the women's tag titles. That was SmackDown. I don't even know what, what day SmackDown is. This, this was the, what, Friday the 5th of June. So the June 5th episode of SmackDown. Did anything really further the build of Backlash? Is anything, after watching tonight, more hyped for Backlash? I guess Sheamus and Jeff Hardy. And outside of that, nothing. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, sub. It goes on the drill. See ya.